Hello and welcome back to part two from the May-June 2023 paper for Computer Science 0478-21. As we said before, this paper is out of 75 marks, but we're only going to be focusing on the final coding question. It's only worth 15 marks. Remember, there is no scenario question anymore. You don't get a scenario question in January. What happens is the, um, the programming question, the coding question, has been included in the paper. It's a blind question. You don't see the question until you get into the exam. But being 15 marks, and 15 out of 75 is a percentage, it means it's only 20% of the final mark for this paper. Okay, so don't be too worried, but we'll see if we can pick you some marks up along the way. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. The questions are always in three parts. An overview of the question, what you are needed to do, and what the pseudocode or program remote code must include. Okay, the specification. So let's read this through. A one-dimensional array, basically called days. Okay, see so it's like we've got the list brackets here. So a one-dimensional array contains the names of the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on. A two-dimensional array, readings, is used to store 24 temperature readings taken once an hour for each of the seven days of the week. Another one-dimensional array, average temperature, is used to store the average temperatures for each day of the week. So it's basically going to take those 24 readings, divide them by 24, and get them and populate average temperature with an average temperature for that particular day. Okay, based on the 24 temperature readings for that particular day. The position of any day's data is the same in all three arrays. For example, if Wednesday is in index four of days, which it would be, Wednesday's temperature readings are in index four of readings, and Wednesday's average temperature is in index four of average temperature. Okay, so we can use that. We can, uh, I'll show you in a minute how we're going to do it. The temperature readings are in Celsius to one decimal place. So we might have to do some rounding. Temperatures can only be from minus 20 degrees to, so there's some validation in here, minus 20 degrees to plus 50 degrees Celsius inclusive. So what do you need to do for this? Well, you've got to write a program that meets the following requirements. We input and validate the hourly temperatures for one week. Okay, so each day we're going to put 24 temperatures in. Sunday, we'll put in 24 temperatures, and make, making sure they're between minus 20 and 50. Then on Monday, we'll do the same, Tuesday, and so on and so forth, until we've, until we've stored 24 times 7 temperatures in our arrays. Then we're going to calculate and store the average temperature for each day of the week. We're going to calculate the average temperature for the whole week. We're going to convert all the average temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit using this formula, Fahrenheit equals Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32. We're going to amp output the average temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit for each day. And we're going to output the overall average temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit for the whole week. Okay, sounds very, very complicated, but we'll be okay. You must use pseudocode or program code and add comments to explain how your code works. You do not need to, and it says this, but if you look at the, uh, any mark schemes or anything, it always does. I haven't done, but I, I've, I've done two ver versions, so I, I will put them both in. You do not need to declare any, ver any arrays of just said variables or constants. You may assume that this has already been done. Well, the arrays have been done, okay? We've got no um, variables and we've got no constants displayed. So, constants are obviously um, these figures here and things like days of the week. All inputs and outputs must contain suitable messages, okay? All day traps must be rounded to one decimal place. Rounded, yeah, we just said that. You, you will need to initialize and populate the array days at the start of the program. Okay, let's have a little look. Okay, so although it does say you do not need to declare any variables, um, arrays or constants, you may assume that this has already been done. When I come to the mark scheme, um, it will become clear why I've done this, and I think it is, I definitely think it is useful. So my constants, um, let me just move this down. Yeah, I'm basing everything up on, up on here. My constants are gonna be minus 20, um, as you can see here minus 20 to plus 50 for the maximum temperature and minimum temperature and I've got hours per day is always going to be 24 and constants days of the week is always going to be seven to seven days in a week 
Meaningful identifiers and appropriate data structures are required in the mark scheme. So I've declared the days as being an array, um, one to seven, and this is a string. I declare the readings. This is an array and this is a real number, so it can be a decimal number, one to seven. All these three are the same because I think it does mention up here. The position of any days data is the same in all three arrays. Here are my three arrays. Array number one for the days data, number two for the days data, and number three for the days data all um, Sunday to Saturday, seven days a week. We've got a string and we've got a reel for the readings and a reel for the average temperature. Okay, week loop, whole number, um, day loop, um, a whole number as well. And then we've got three more um, decimal numbers or floats, you could call them. I've got um, initializing the temp, and I've got the total day temp, the total week temp, and the average week temp. All these will become clear when I start going through the code. But this is what I've declared. This is what I think I'm going to need to use. Okay. But to start with, I'm going to do some validation because it does say here input and validate the um, hourly temperatures for one week. I've just created a function which I'm going to I'm going to call in the code. Um, the function is validate the temperature. Okay, and this is basically enforcing um, me to um, create a valid temperature. So. The code will run while temperatures that are inputted, because it's going to it's going to ask it in the code to input a temperature. Okay, so while the temperature is less than the minimum temperature, or it's greater than the maximum temperature, i.e., it's not falling between this range, it's going to kick out a message saying invalid temperature. Enter a temperature between. Okay, these two numbers, and then we input a temperature. Okay, it'll end the while loop. It's going to return temperature to for us to put the temperatures in. So that's my first function, and then I've got another function based on the average. Okay. So and this is basically I'm, I've put a count in here called total, yeah equals zero, and for each temp in temperatures, total equals total plus temp. So it's going to just add all the totals to add all the temperatures together and give me a running total, and that means I can create an average by dividing the total by the length, i.e. By, by the number of temperatures that are stored. Okay, so 24 temperatures um, stored in a day. So the total temperature divided by the number of temperatures, i.e. 24, and that will give me the, um, the average temperature. So it's just a couple of functions that I'm gonna call later on in the program. But before that, I just wanna go through the mark scheme and show you why I've put these things in. As I said, it's broken down into 15 marks. Now the first nine marks, maximum nine marks, Obviously, a range of programming techniques used is appropriate to the problem. Usually, we're using selection, we're using um, we and uh, we're using some kind of um, iteration, some kind of looping in most of the programs. So while loops, for loops, if, fell ifs, and and all that sort of thing. Basic basic programming techniques, but you they need to be appropriate for what what's happening. But that's only part of this um, of AO two. The data structures chosen are appropriate and store all the data required. You're picking up marks for this. Even if your program isn't great, you're picking up marks here. Okay. So, and moving on, so that's, that's the first nine marks. Moving on to the next six marks, as you can see here, the program has been fully commented. Okay, so we're evaluating the program. It's been fully commented. So even if it doesn't work, or it, it's weird, you've commented it. If you're fully commenting the code, suitable identifiers with names this was important the variables the constants everything's got to have appropriate names and the arrays the names have been given for you okay program runs in a logical order the solution is accurate okay there's a little bit the solution is inaccurate in many places okay yeah but it's fully commented um the suitable identifiers for the names so as a, as, a, as a marker, it's, it's not the easiest thing to mark. But if you're picking up things like you commented in the code and you are putting correct and meaningful names on, on, um, on your variables and constants, then you're picking up marks for it. So you will get marks. Okay? The solution meets all of the requirements given in the question. Okay, well, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But it's, out of, it's only out of 15 marks. As I say, a lot of those marks you can pick up from your data structures and you can pick up from doing meaningful names. Okay, now that I've gone through the mark scheme, I just want to go through this little first bit before I actually start writing. You need to initialize and populate the array days, okay, at the start of the program. So all I've got done there is is I've, I've called days, and days equals Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday through to Saturday. Okay, so that's what my days will look like. And again, the readings will be days per week, 
and hours per day okay down up here an average temperature will be based on the days of the week so average temperature for all the days that are in that particular week okay days again we start off the program and i'm going to input and validate the hourly temperatures for one week well, i've done the function to make sure i'm entering temperatures between the set values so input and validate hourly temperatures for one week okay so just to go through this we're going to be inputting our temperatures here okay we've got some messages because i'm populating a um, a two-dimensional array i've done a loop within a loop so for the days index and for the hours index okay so it's going to be populating from position the first position zero to the days in the week minus one because the days in the week are seven but that would be one to seven i've got to come backwards i hope this makes sense that I've started in position of the array zero to position six. Basically, the number of days is seven minus one, so it's six. Um, and then print the message here, hourly temperatures for days index, okay? And then within that loop, output hour, okay? An hour index, yeah, and input the temperature. So we're gonna be inputting, putting the temperatures for every hour, but also for every hour of every day um, readings is going to be day index and hour index equals valid temperature which i just showed you that function um, this is going to store all of my things so we're going to end both for loops please remember to end your loops okay but that's going to store our basic temperatures using for loops okay now to calculate and store the average i've done this for both the um, average temperature for each day and then for the whole week again using the function that i've called earlier which I, which we can go back to for day index from zero to days of the week again because we're doing positions minus one average temp yeah day index equals calculate average reading day index okay and four and then overall average equals so this is going to be calculating and storing our average temperatures this we're not inputting anything we're just reading from what we've previously done reading from the hourly temperatures that we've stored okay in that particular week so this is basically calculating the information from the we're not having to put anything anything new in we're, put, we're populating the average temperature at the same time as we're doing the inputting and validating the hourly temperatures okay this is just showing me how, that i'm populating um, my average temperature with the day in the with the day index okay and calculating the average temperature in the readings okay which is linked to the day index okay <laughs> are you with me so far basically this is the last bit of the program okay and this is this is where the marks are going to come in so i'm going to output the average temperatures in celsius remember we've got to output them in both celsius and fahrenheit so for day index from zero to with the position of so position six output days um index yeah what's ever stored in days yeah plus um the rounded average temperature and this is in centigrade so it's going to output all the average temperatures stored in average temp yeah and based on the days index it's going to print them all out okay um overall average yeah, and I'm sorry, we're using round as well. I've just placed, I've just put round in there. And one, put one decimal place. Output, average temperature again, zero to um, the last position in days of the week. And round the temperature, I'm doing this to one decimal place. This calculation, nine over five plus 32 times nine over five plus 32 and round to one decimal place for Fahrenheit. And then the overall average, we're gonna do it that way. So that's the output. Outputs. I'm using for loops okay so i've got a why so i've not used any else elifs and anything in this one in this particular code i've just used a while loop at the beginning so while people are inputting a correct temperature carry on with the procedure and then there's lots and lots of for loops to populate each of those arrays with the correct temperature and then it just outputs everything at the end um, using this so i'll display um the full code so just to go quickly through it declared my constants declared my arrays and my variables and then i've started and I've, I've created a function yeah which validates the temperature that's been inputted basically between these two figures okay i've created a further function 
that calculates the average based on the temperatures for each day of the week. And then I'm going to populate my days array with these Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, and show you that my average temp is based on days of the week, my readings, as I said before. Then we move on to the code and we're going to be inputting the temperatures here, input temperatures uh, based on what we're doing here, based on the messages that we've been given. And then we're going to populate the readings and we're going to make sure the temperature is validated. Yeah, that's, the, and that's basically that. And then finally, we're going to calculate and store the averages and then we're going to output um, rounded numbers to one decimal place in both centigrade and in Fahrenheit based on this calculation. So that's how I'd do it. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please ask me questions and I can, uh, I can show you things in different ways. There's many, many different ways of doing this, but I think that this is the simplest way and this will get you the most marks. Or this should, it, we should be near 15 marks based on this. I realize though that you have got to handwrite this and that's obviously never going to be easy. Please, and this is what it says on the mark scheme, please put lots and lots of comments in. Please put, if you're outputting, a what are you outputting? What, do you, what is it showing? What do you want it to do? Yeah? What is it demonstrating? This here is going to output averages. This here, okay, this comment, it outputs results in Celsius and Fahrenheit. This here calculates and stores the average temperatures. Tell us what the code is doing, and that's where you're going to get your marks as well. Okay, thank you very much indeed for watching. I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.